This is Damiano Gentile from Human Intense Research Hospital, coming to us virtually. He will discuss uh, preservation of axillary lymph nodes compared to complete dissection in T1, T2 breast cancer patients presenting one with one to two metastatic sentinel lymph nodes. A multi-center randomized clinical trial, Synodar-1. Dr. Gentile. Good morning, everyone. This is Damiano Gentile from the Breast Unit of Humanitas Clinical and Research Center in Milan, Italy. First of all, let me thank you, the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium Committee, for giving me the possibility to present the results of our study, which is a multicenter randomized clinical trial, the Synodar 1 trial. So, axillary lymph node dissection has always been part of breast cancer treatment since it was firstly described by Halstead. However, during the past 25 years, surgical management of the axilla has shifted towards a more conservative approach. It is certainly true that axillary lymph node dissection is an effective procedure for an accurate axillary staging while ensuring a satisfactory local regional control. However, it is associated with a significant risk of complications such as pain, lymphedema, numbness, and restricted shoulder movement. The minimally invasive and less morbid procedure of sentinel lymph node biopsy has replaced axillary lymph node dissection in clinically not negative breast cancer axillary staging, demonstrating optimal disease control and not compromising long term survival. Until now, axillary lymph node dissection has remained the standard surgical technique. Sentinel lymph node is macrometastatic. However, complete axillary dissection may now be considered over treatment for early stage breast cancer, and this recommendation starts being challenged based on the following consideration. Diagnosis tends to be earlier by screening mammography, so patients present with smaller tumors and lower axillary burden. Less than half of the patients with sentinel lymph node metastasis presents additional metastasis in other lymph nodes. The majority of sentinel lymph node positive patients not undergoing axillary lymph node dissection will receive chemotherapy and or endocrine treatment maintaining low local regional failure rates. The American College of Surgeon Oncology Group Z11 randomized clinical trial has questioned the therapeutic benefit of axillary lymph node dissection in patients with metastatic sentinel lymph node, setting the ground for introduction of axillary dissection omission in the surgical management of not positive patients. Patients undergoing breast conserving surgery and whole breast radiotherapy with one or two metastatic sentinel lymph nodes were randomized to axillary lymph node dissection or no future axillary treatment. The trial concluded that axillary dissection did not provide outcome advantages and no significant difference between axillary lymph node dissection or sentinel lymph node biopsy only groups was reported with respect to axillary recurrence, recurrence-free survival and ovary survival at 9.3 years. However, these results are controversial due to various study limitation. The trial was underpowered because premature enrollment conclusions. Too many patients were lost to follow up. And about half of the patients presented macrometastasis. Moreover, there was a lack of radiotherapy quality assurance with missing data for more than two thirds of randomized patients with a significant number of protocol deviations and the use of high tangent fields. 
These limitations make it difficult to generalize the findings of the trial and imply the need for stronger evidence to support the recommendation of axillary lymph node dissection omission in sentinel lymph node positive breast cancer patients. Based on this consideration, the breast unit of Humanitas Clinical and Research Center in Milan promoted the Italian multicenter randomized clinical trial Synodar 1. The Synodar 1 trial is a prospective non inferiority multicenter randomized study aimed at assessing the therapeutic role of axillary lymph node dissection in patients undergoing either breast conserving surgery or mastectomy for T1 or T2 breast cancer presenting one or two macrometastatic sentinel lymph nodes. The enrollment of the study ended in April 2020 and follow-up is still ongoing. Fifty-two different Italian centers participated to this study. The study was designed as follows. All patients with T1 or T2 breast cancer with one or two macrometastatic sentinel lymph nodes undergoing any kind of surgery, either breast conserving surgery or mastectomy, were randomized into two different treatment arms. The first treatment group was composed of patients undergoing standard treatment, meaning complete axillary lymph node dissection. The second treatment group was composed of patients undergoing only sentinel lymph node biopsy. After surgery, all patients were candidate to a juvenile treatment according to the breast unit multidisciplinary meeting. All candidates were aged between 40 years and 75 years. They all had a histopathological diagnosis of invasive breast carcinoma which was unilateral or unifocal. The dimension of the tumor was less than 5 cm and all patients had no metastasis and they did not undergo any kind of neoadjuvant therapy, meaning no neoadjuvant chemotherapy or endocrine treatment. So the randomization of the patient ended in April 2020 with 889 patients randomized. The two different treatment arms were homogeneous in terms of number and only few patients were excluded for missing data or errors in randomization. As regards axillary treatment results, we can see that there was a median of two sentinel lymph nodes in both treatment arms and as we analyze the type of metastasis of the sentinel lymph nodes, overall we can see that there were only five cases of micrometastasis with two cases of micrometastasis in the standard arm and only three cases of micrometastasis in the experimental arm and as we analyze non-sentinel lymph nodes, meaning when we analyze additional lymph nodes of the axilla in the standard arm, we can see that there were additional 193 additional patients with more positive non-sentinel lymph nodes, meaning that 44% of patients in the standard arm had additional lymph nodes macrometastatic in the axilla, meaning that there was a mean positive non-sentinel lymph nodes of 1.4 and a median positive non-sentinel lymph nodes of 0. As regards surgery of the breast, we can see that there are homogeneous results between the two different groups of treatment but dishomogeneous results within the same group. As we can see, almost 80% of patients in each group underwent breast conserving surgery and only 20% of patients in both groups underwent mastectomy, either total mastectomy or nipple sparing mastectomy. 
And now let's analyze the following pattern. Let's see the events and survival. There were only 16 events in the standard arm of treatment and 20 events in the experimental arm. There were 4 cases of mortality in each group and only one case of axillary recurrence in each group, three cases of ipsilateral breast cancer recurrence in the experimental arm, seven cases of distant recurrence and eight cases of distant recurrences in the standard arm and experimental arm respectively. So as we can see, there were no statistically significant difference in terms of both survival and recurrence in the two different groups of treatment. And follow-up was similar between the two different treatment groups with a median of 34 months overall. So when we analyze the long-term oncological outcomes of both groups in terms of recurrence and overall survival, we can see that both in the intention to treat population and in the pro per protocol population there were no statistically significant difference between recurrence and survival. Additionally, when we analyze the long-term oncological outcomes in terms of recurrence and survival of the intention to treat population, we can see that there are no statistically significant difference between recurrence and survival, also in the projection of the five-year follow-up. So next question is, what is the median time of axillary recurrence? Greco evaluated the impact of breast carcinoma surgery without axillary dissection on axillary and distant relapses in 400 patients, showing that the median axillary free relapse time was 30 months. Fisher showed that the median axillary free relapse time was almost 15 months. Wong reviewed patients with invasive breast cancer who underwent sentinel lymph front biopsy with a positive sentinel lymph front without axillary lymph front dissection showing a median axillary free relapse time of 32 months and Sekini reviewed 1,056 women who underwent sentinel lymph node biopsy without dissection, showing a median axillary free relapse time of 20, 23 months. The median follow-up of Synoder 1 trial is 34 months. Let's now analyze the difference between the Z11 trial and the Synoder 1 trial. The Z11 trial concluded with a median follow-up of 9.3 years. Instead, the Synodera 1 trial, the enrollment ended in April 2020 with a follow-up, which is still ongoing, with a median follow-up time of 34 months. When we analyze the micrometastasis data of the Z11 trial, we can see that almost 40% of patients had micrometastasis in the sentinel lymph nodes. Instead, only five patients overall had micrometastasis in the sentinel lymph node in the Synoder 1 trial. Moreover, there were almost 30% of detailed radiotherapy data in the Z11 trial versus almost 80% of detailed data in the radiotherapy uh, characteristics of the Synoder 1 trial and there were zero mastectomies performed in the Z11 trial instead almost 20% of patients underwent mastectomy in the Synoder 1 trial. So the overlap between the results of the Synoder 1 trial and those of the Z11 trial is very convincing. So is it still correct to continue to propose complete axillary dissection to patients who meet the study selection criteria? So the breast unit of the Humanitas Clinical and Research Center, which is the study coordinator of the trial, believes that the conditions of uncertainty that justified the randomization between complete axillary dissection and the omission no longer exist. 
Therefore, the core team of the Brest Tunic expressed a favorable opinion on the proposal to include in the internal guidelines the omission of complete axillary dissection. Thank you for your attention. Just a couple of questions. We'll Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Gentile. A couple of quick uh, questions online, and I think uh, the first one is uh, Z11 was for clinically non-negative patients, but the question says that in your schema, actually, you showed that it was clinical N1, but I think you this is, was a study for clinical N0 patients, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Can you hear me? I'm not sure if Dr. Gentile can hear us. Uh, can you hear us, Dr. Gentile? Okay, this might be a great example to move on. Yeah, I think so. But I think, again, I will try to answer myself. I think this, uh, and he corrected it later on, is for clinical and zero patient. Um, I think uh, since we cannot hear, Dr. Gentile, you cannot hear us. Yes, now I can hear okay, you. Can you me? Okay. Uh, just to clarify, this was a patient, this was a study for clinical N0 patients with one to two positive center nodes, correct? Clinically and radio radiologically zero, uh, N0 patients. Right. They, were, they were checked with um, ultrasound, axillary ultrasound. Great. Um, and also another question was uh, ERT to the axilla, I guess radiation to the axilla avoided in the breast cancer, breast conserving surgery group with one to two center nodes? Exactly. They avoided the, the axillary zone, so the radiotherapy was directed into the uh, quadrantectomy, and uh, some patients also received a, a boost, a radiotherapy boost. But other than that, uh, the axillary region was avoided. Did the patients undergone mastectomy receive radiation? No, they didn't. They did not. Very good. Okay, uh, I think uh, we're a little bit behind, so I think we'll move on. Thank you very much for your presentation. And You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.